Stacey, have you ever been on a safari? A safari, you mean like the ones in Africa where you go and see lions and everything? Well, that's what most people think of when they hear the word safari, that you're going to get dressed in a pith helmet and go off into yeah. the jungle <laughs> and see animals. But safari, the word itself means a journey. And you and I are going on a safari, but we're going to do it in a pond. Oh, I see. <laughs> and I'd suggest that you try it because it's very exciting. But you need some tools in order to do it. So first okay. of all, you get the bottom in the middle and the top of the water, put it in the aquarium, let it sit. Then I put a light over there, and you can see, if you look through the side, already all kinds of animals swimming around there. Yeah, especially by the light. They've well, all some gathered. of them are attracted to the light, and I then see. others would be uh, repelled by it. Then what you need to do after you, you can look at, thing, at the things right here in the tank with various kinds of magnifiers. Here's one, for example, that wouldn't magnify too much, and you can see a fairly yeah. decent view. And that's the type that magnifies maybe three times or so. Then, when you get a little more uh, expert at it, you might want one in which you can magnify uh, three, five, and seven times, or ten times, or up to twenty times. And with right. this kind, you see, you can very add various lenses to it. So you can see really well. Yeah. My favorite, of course, is this one. This is a jeweler's loop. Have you ever seen jewelers using one of these? No, I don't think so. Well, it has two lenses on it like this. Mm -hmm. This one magnifies about five times, and this one, you put it on, it's about twelve times. And here's the way you use it. You see, you put it around your head like that. Oh, yeah, I've seen those kinds. Yeah, like this. And then when, you, when you're finished with it, see, you can use like that, and you can use both your hands. But the important thing is that it leaves both hands free to, to be able to look at stuff. And it also means that it holds the magnifier close to your eye, which is where you ought to have it, so yeah. you see the biggest field. Then when you found something that you really want to look at, you can put the auxiliary lens on it, and now it really magnifies. So now, after you've found that there are some animals in here, this is kind of big and you can't see way in the middle, so what no. you want to do is take a little chunk of this and get it out somehow. And there are various tools to do it. Here is one of the handiest. A, a baster? baster. <laughs> well, you see, it's a great big syringe. You can put it in there and let it go like this and you'll suck up a lot of the animals. Mm -hmm. So I've used that a lot. Then a smaller version is also helpful in that if you want to get a little small animals, you can mm -hmm. get it with this. Eyedropper. Then, uh, this is also handy for being picking up stuff. Yeah. Then there are a couple of special tools. This one, for example, is a, just a pin with a thing bent on the end like that so that you can pull the little weeds apart or handle the little animals. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this is one of the most important. A paintbrush? Yes, a little paintbrush. Because you see, you can push the animals against the side and move them around without dis uh, damaging them. I see. see. Then what you want, after you catch them like that, then you want to put them in little small containers like this. And even the top is very good because you can put some of the water in here and you can see what you've got. Yeah. And you can study them. And then you'll kind of wonder about what they are. And then I'd suggest that here's an inexpensive book or you can go to the library and get books. And this is all filled with nothing but descriptions of all the little the animals that you find. <laughs> and this is my favorite page. You see some of the animals that are on there? Yeah. I've a... caught a couple of those. Oh, I'm going to show them to you. So I want you to take a look at that page. Okay. Now, ordinarily, you'd be looking at them with a magnifier, but I have a special thing all rigged up. Here, you see, is my little version of the, of the aquarium. Oh, yeah. Maybe on a little tank like that. You can even see some things swimming around. Yeah, there's some, and I captured some of them and put them in here. But now, let's you and I look at them together by coming over here, and I'll put them in this setup right here. This yeah, is a little microscope mm -hmm. stage, you see. It's a movie camera. Well, and the lights are shining, and it's a television camera over here, and the signal goes down over here, and up there, oh. is, there is the view. There's lots of things swimming around. Yeah, there. lots of things. So I, have, I really haven't had a chance to look at it, so let's you and I ex go on a safari and see what we've got. There's something that looks like a miniature tadpole with a yes, tail? Yes, and that, that is a, those are eggs that are, that are on the end of, of this tail. Uh, there's the edge of the tank. Now let's go up to the top and see what we've got up there. Well, there's a f few What is that? I haven't the slightest idea. That's the, one of the exciting things about going on so a safari So you always find like something this, new? But you never know what you're going to find. And that's just <laughs> like what happens when you go to Africa. Because you've been riding around in the bush and you never know what's going to be around yeah. the corner. Yeah, that's neat. Now let me take this out of here because I captured some animals ahead of time and I put them in a special little tank, just like you would on a safari. You'd capture the animals and put them in a cage. Well, here, here are a supply that Some more. Yeah, I think you'll be able to recognize these without... Oh, a snail. Yes. A oh, little, it's moving, tiny too. Snail. So you can see its, it's little There's feelers it, on yeah, top. Yeah, see the little feelers? Yeah. 
And it's oh, that's walking along on its foot. It does not move like it doesn't seem to be moving very slow, but well, that's again because we're magnifying the the mm -hmm. movement as well. It seems to be gliding along. Yes, it sort of glides along on that foot. Neat. And they're fun to watch because they don't move so fast, so you can follow them a little easier. Yeah. Well, anyway, hey, you can have ride. a lot of fun with these. Then, do you remember that page in the book that I showed you? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll show you my, my favorites. And here they are. These are sort of the lions of, of the underwater safari. They're big. Yeah, they look big. Let's go over. For, there's one right there. Oh, yeah. Is that his tail there? That's his tail. Let me get him in focus. He's hiding along the side. Let me go to the other tank. I got some more over here and see. There's one. Oh, yeah, he's on. He's upside down. What are these called, Gay? These are various nymphs. They're a type of fly that looks something like a dragonfly, but they're smaller, and their wings are, are quite oh, thin I and see. so forth. And they live most of their life underwater, and they hatch. There, and they hatch then and come out and fly around for the one day when they're adults. But the rest of the time, they're living underwater in this form. This Looks like a grasshopper almost. Sort of, doesn't it? See the uh -huh. big eyes? Yeah, it's on the just, side of their head. Yeah, isn't it amazing that this animal will eventually sprout wings and be flying around in the air? Yeah. So you can spend hours watching these because they're, they're great predators. That's why I call them the lions of the underwater yeah. safari. Because they, they eat other animals and they have a long jaw that comes out and grabs them. So you'll find yourself sitting there holding <laughs> your breath waiting for them to, to grab something. Anyway, you said you'd never been on a safari, and now you have. Yeah. But a safari in a pond.